Beautiful weather, huh? Yeah, uh, gorgeous. That reminds me of Dubai. Really? Yeah, I was just out there a few weeks ago. Uh, the Sultan of Abu Dhabi flew me out there in his private jet. You know him? Friend of a friend. Uh, I met him in Vegas. He's uh, pretty, pretty wealthy, right? You know how they make those lists? The world's wealthiest people? Yeah, like Bill Gates is number one or... Used to be. So, he's got a hundred million dollars in his Swiss bank account. He can't touch it. Why not? It's ten thousand dollars just to get the paperwork done. Okay, well I think he's got ten thousand dollars. Can't do it. It's illegal to use your own money. Of course. Red tape. So I'm like, Salton, listen. I'll invest 2,500 bucks. I'm sure I can get some guys to pitch in 2,500 as well. Okay, we'll get the 10,000, you get your money, you go on your merry way. He was so moved by my compassion that he said, I'll split the 100 million, half for the investors, half for himself. Half of 100 million dollars, that's, that's 50. That's 50 million dollars. Is it? I don't really pay attention to the money. I'm just trying to help a friend out, you know? Here's the crazy thing now. We just need one more guy to pitch in 2,500. Dude, that, that's me. I'm the guy. No. I can do that. Yeah. I, I barely know you. No. I don't want to impose. No, I, no, no. Hey, let me call my wife. Hey, I'll clear it with mm, you. Not, wish there was time. What do you mean? I have to have the money by 6 p.m. when the whole deal's off. That's in like three minutes. You know, I'm sorry for bringing this up. Wait, I, I don't, whoa, I don't wait, need wait, to wait. impose. Oh, no, no, no. Thank hey, you. It's no, nice no, to meet you. Who do I wired the money to? Folks, uh, you know, OxyFresh, OXIFresh.com, it's a, it's a brand that's been around for a while, uh, not five years, uh, not not six years, not seven, not eight, not nine, not 10, not 11, not 12. It's been around for a long time. It's getting near 15 years. It's been around. It's got a, how many years? 17. 17, wow. which is more than 14, more than 15, yes. more than 16. <laughs> uh, then and you think about it, though, the brand has been around for a long time, and it's it's got a, a not not one location, not two, not five, not 10. I think it has, uh, Matt, what do you have, 11 locations now? How many locations do you have, Matt? We have just, uh, just a little bit over 500 now. Over We're 500 open. locations. You've been over. open for seven months, or do you say 17 years? 17 years and a few months. Okay, oh. yeah. So I, and I say this to say that you, you've been around a while. You know what's up. And I'm going to talk today about some stuff that would make you an ideal fit for an OxyFresh or a bad fit to buy one. So let's let's get into the conversation here. So we're going to go to oxyfresh.com and we're going to look at this. And, and, and by the way, if you buy an oxyfresh.com, uh, full disclosure, I've had the opportunity to, to know the founder of the company for years. I feel very good about the brand, but you guys can make your own decision there. But oxyfresh, oxyfresh.com. Um, you know, every single week, if you buy an oxyfresh, you are going to have to clean carpets and or train people to clean carpets. That is, that is something... That you have to do. And I'm going to take notes because I, it's, it, it comes across. I don't want it to be patronizing. I want it to come across. I just want to make sure that the that the profundity of how simple the system is for you as an operator. Okay. Step one, you have to you have to be able to train people to clean carpets. Okay. Or you have to clean carpets. Okay. Well, or you have to clean carpets. Now, we're, I don't want to get too hung, too hung up on this idea. But Matt, it, it, why does everybody out there who buys an OxyFresh at the end of the day, why do they have to either A, clean carpets themselves or B, train people to clean carpets? Well, let me step in there a little bit because there are some scenarios like myself where I personally don't train my employees um, and, and I do not do jobs. Mm. So Ox Fresh has an entire training program within it that will train my employees for me um, for free at any time. So every time I hire a new person, I have them go two or three days with my team and two or three days with the home office team. Um, and so that they're out, they're out on their own within four to six days. So let's talk about this for a second. So you're saying you could hypothetically buy an OxyFresh and not actually train people to clean carpets or clean carpets yourself, you could have somebody else that does that for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we think there's a ton of value to the owner knowing exactly what their employees are doing and what their business is capable of and being able to be experts. But I mean, I, I can tell a lot of people go, well, are you going to be the one that come out to, <laughs> comes out to clean job? I go, absolutely not. I would destroy everything, right? I got really qualified, very trained people that they're experts at this craft. And they're experts because they've been trained by experts, 
I'm an expert at running my company, but I'm no longer an expert at cleaning the jet cleaning. Like I know everything about, I know all of our products, all of our mixings, all that sort of stuff, but, but I don't train anyone anymore. The guys that I have, you know, the home office does a much better job. Okay. So these are the Oxyfresh key revenue producing activities. There's more, but again, you have to either a train people to train. Somebody has to train people to, to train those. To, someone has to train people to clean the carpets or you have to clean the carpet yourself. Somebody, mm. somebody has to do that. Now, now, now after that, Matt, you have to gather objective Google reviews from your happy customers. Now, if you look up Oxyfresh right now, folks, if you type in a carpet cleaning quotes um, and Jordan, just make to make sure I'm a good, good teacher here today. Oxyfresh has been around for how long, sir? 17 years. And they have what? Whoa. Seven locations? How many locations? 11. No, they have over 500, right? 11. Over 500 locations. I mean, this is a real thing. So if you type in gotcha. carpet cleaning quotes, Oxyfresh right now has 252,000 objective Google reviews, 252,279 objective Google reviews. Matt, why do the local owners have to gather objective Google reviews from actual customers? Yeah, because the marketing that you do only gets you to the customer's front door. Their ability to look at what other customers have said about you and also other customers have said about you within like a one to two week period that they know there are real reviews that have happened of recent. That's what allows them to actually trust you and call you, right? You can be all over the internet, but if you have no reviews, you don't really have a leg to stand on because all your competition is going to, hmm. right? So it's not just being good at one thing. You can't just show up. you got to show up with the a reason for your customers to actually use you. And one of those big reasons is reviews, right? Somebody else in that area, in that neighborhood, in that region has said, this company's great. I trust them. Their employee was attentive to details and communicate with them. That's what people want because we're going to be going into people's homes and businesses, right? They want to make sure who they're hiring is going to do exactly what we say we're going to do online. And now, you can't know that without, without getting reviews. Now, Matt, Matt, the greats, you know, in OxyFresh, they really bored down. They do what works and they hammer it. But the mediocre, you know, tend to struggle with boredom and look for a new idea of the week. Um, again, the, the greats bored down while the mediocre, while the mediocre struggle with boredom. So I want to get this idea uh, in, into, I want to really communicate this idea here. Um, Jordan, you you work with many business consulting clients. Yeah. And can you walk me through, and none of our clients would ever do this, but, but why would other people, not even our listeners, just other people, friends of our listeners, why would they struggle with boredom and look for a new idea of the week as opposed to implementing what works? Because they don't have goals. They don't know what works. Uh, and they're just, they're just drifting. They're just. Matt, wandering. how about this? How about even when somebody knows what works, yep. why would somebody, and I'm sure there's never been an oxy fresh owner that's ever done this. I'm just talking about other, other people. Why <laughs> would it be that some people don't want to do the thing that works? Well, I think some people know that to get to the end of that, um, you know, that rainbow or the, to, to where it's actually going to work, they've got to follow the system, not just the first step, but maybe it's a three step process, right? They've got to actually put the effort in to get to that last one. I can, I've done this a long time and, you know, everyone's always told me that they want it. They're going to be go getter, try hard, but the numbers don't suggest that, right? Some people try overly hard. Some people try enough to be successful. And then some people don't do enough to even warrant them getting a business. So it's exactly that. It's like people don't want to do it because they see the road and they see that there's going to be some obstacles. Maybe mm -hmm. there's going to be work that has to be had. And so instead of putting that work in right away, they're trying to find a shortcut to get them to the same end goal, which will only get them halfway there. And they won't get to the end. I mean, we've done this long enough. It's like, it's the roadside, the billboard thing for me. Like I always use a billboard because Billboards have never worked for us. They never will work for us. And so people want to not do the things like get the reviews and make sure where customers actually find our, our industry, but they just want to spend money on a billboard and think that's going to work. Even after we tell them, we've had a lot of people try this. It doesn't work. Now, right? Matt, step four is you got to run. You have to run the approved OxyFresh advertisement. So there is a, now there is a, um, you know, kind of a little proprietary stuff. There's something you buy a franchise that you have access to certain tools that you don't have if you're a listener, hmm. but Matt, why would somebody want to keep running consistently the proven best practice, Oxyfresh advertisements, as opposed to trying a new ad every week on ad on AdWords or on the various online ad platforms? Yeah, because it's proven. If you can see the same things over and over and over, you're going to remember that. If every single time you see a company, it's a different color scheme or they're saying different things, different slogans, 
or it's in a different, maybe even a different um, a, a way of marketing, like that roadside billboard, right? Um, because they're they're gonna they're not gonna remember you. But if they go, oh yeah, I, I keep seeing this company, they must be good, right? I see them all over the place. I'm now reading their reviews. I see their logo is catchy. They've got great taglines, like for us, it's eco friendly, low moisture, safe for kids and pets, backed by the EPA seal of approval. Like all those things are important to someone. And if they keep seeing it over and over, and then they also see you the next year and then they see you the next year. Like you get that customer not only once, but you get them for a long period of time. If you change your logo, they're not going to recognize you. So what's going to, what's going to keep them coming back if they can't even recognize you. You got to keep it consistent. Now, Matt, let's talk about the, the branding thing. Why do you have to keep the consistent brand and not change the logo every week? You know, why do you have to keep the consistent? If you buy an Oxyfresh, uh, Jordan, I, and I'm sure you would never have this thought, but no. I think some people buy a franchise. And they go, you know what? I want to change the logo every week. As opposed to getting Google reviews, launching the ads at work, and training people to clean carpets, they might want to change the logo. Why do you think people would want to change the logo every week? Because they want to try shortcuts, like Matt was saying. They like to they want to have they have a new big idea and they think that'll work because they see how hard it, it might be to do mm. what's proven. So instead of doing what's proven, they're like, well, uh, what, you know, let's just change the logo. That it'll it'll stand out. It looks good, new color. It's bright. Instead of just doing what works. Matt, again, I, I know you've never had this with an OxyFresh owner. I'm just trying to help help people out there because somebody out there today is absolutely a great fit to buy an OxyFresh. Somebody out there who wants to buy a proven system and use it, yep. and somebody out there is not a good fit. Somebody out there who wants to buy a proven system and then tinker with it all the time. Could you talk about that, Matt? I mean, what what are the dangers of being the guy who always wants to adjust the height and width of the logo. Yeah, I mean, think about it. I mean, we're trying to create a brand nationwide so that it benefits the, the franchise locally. Because if we can send out constant brand awareness across the entire country and to your customer base on your behalf and have at least one touch point per month, right? And have good specials that go out in different mediums like email and text and all of that. And then you on your side, you change your logo or your color scheme. I see this a lot in college towns where they go, I want Oxford's logo, but I want to do it in the color of the, the, the university. It's like, well, now what you've done is now you have two different companies trying to do the same thing because now you have a logo that maybe looks like Missouri colors, but then Oxyfresh on our end, we're sending out our branded logo across the country. It doesn't look the same. So we're actually hurting ourselves. Now the customer's like, well, this customer, this business used to be blue and now they're they're black and gold. It's like, people need that consistency in a brand, right? It's the same thing if you go to the store. If they change the color of the box, you, you typically buy rice, it's going to throw you off, right? But on it online, you're not sitting there with the box in your hand looking. You're just like, gone to the next one. Yeah, Matt, why can't a, a local franchise owner, a local OxyFresh owner, why can't they ever stop recruiting? They, they can never stop recruiting. You, know, you can't just look at your team and say, man, I've got three carpet techs that are awesome. I'm done recruiting. Why could people never stop hiring? Because if you think that you're not going to need to hire again, then you have a real problem in understanding any business at all. You're either not growing at all, or you refuse to see what's going to happen eventually, which is things are going to happen. Things are going to change. Like people quit jobs for lotteries. It's not necessarily bad. Their life could have changed. Right. And so to, to think that that's never going to happen to you because you own a company is very naive. Like I hired someone where uh, I knew I was going to hire someone. I, once I started that, it took me three days to hire someone. They put their two weeks in today. They'll be working with me in, in two weeks. Right. <laughs> if I was not consistently doing that, I'd have to start from scratch, try to figure out who was a good fit. Right. Rerun all my ads, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, if, if you're prepared for things that, that might happen, you're going to be in a great spot. If you're always adjusting or, you know, retroactively, you know, moving your business to things, it just makes it harder. Every goal you're trying to get to is going to be a little bit longer, which means your goals are going to take a little bit longer. It just makes everything a lot harder. Now, Matt, is there anything else that people need to be doing every week if they buy an OxyFresh? If somebody invests the time to buy an OxyFresh today, is there anything else that people need to be doing every week if they own an OxyFresh? Absolutely. I mean, I think um, I think in small business, there's a huge problem with people understanding what's actually going on in their company. They might just be looking at their bank account and seeing if they're in the positive, or they might just be looking at you know, a, a small sample size of their customer base to see if they're doing a good job. I mean, you need to have reporting software that tells you exactly what's happening with your business live time, right? You need to have an actual um, scale to tell you which one of your employees is performing at the highest level on a percentage basis. And for those that aren't comments from customers to be able to adjust, 
Because if you don't know what your customers are saying about you, you're not going to be able to manage at a high level. Same thing with your numbers. Like if you don't know exactly where all your customers are coming from, what you're spending on marketing, what you can do to adjust your budgets to things that are working well, maybe increase or maybe readjust things that aren't. If you're just sitting there and never making adjustments, or if I ask you like, what's your best marketing campaign and you can't tell me, there's a lot of work to be had there. There's so much that can be gained on the margins of your, of your reports. But if you're not looking at them, it's hard. And I think that's one of the best benefits to OxyFresh is that we give you those reports. You don't even have to create a single thing. You just have to click a button. Mm -hmm. What you do with that information is extremely important. It's all right there. OxyFresh provides a turnkey solution for you. So in closing, Matt, I encourage everybody today, if you're out there today and you're saying, you know, I want to switch careers. I'm tired of working at a workplace that makes me wear a mask every day, or you're tired of mandatory temperature checks, or you're just tired of corporate compliance, or you just want to be have more freedom over your time and your, your, your schedule, and you want to be able to earn limitless income, I encourage you to go to OxyFresh.com, OXIFresh.com, click on the franchising button right there, and schedule a consultation with Matt Klein and a member of the team. Uh, Matt, if people do request an appointment with you, how long will that first consultation take or what, what, what does that look like? Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. I just want to learn a little bit about what, what's got you going down this road, what you're currently doing, what some of your goals are, what your investment threshold is, territory that's available in around you or where you're maybe looking to go to. I'll explain who I am to this company or, or one of my guys, uh, either Mike or Andy will do the same thing. Um, which whoever you speak to, me, Andy, or Mike, we all run our own franchise as well. So you're talking to an expert that's hand doing it right now with a full-time development job. So you're going to be talking to people that are experts in every single piece of this. Um, and it doesn't cost you a single thing to explore it. Matt, um, people might not know this, but on, from where we sit in the studio here, you're smelling great over Zoom. Uh, is there any type of uh, advice you want to give people, just kind of a bonus pro tip? Are you covering yourself in the latest, greenest carpet cleaning uh, uh, chemicals, or, or are you going natural? Or what do you what do you do? All doing? natural, man. Cold shower first thing in the morning. Cold shower first thing in the Are you wearing? Are, what, what are you wearing today? Are you wearing scrubs, Matt? What are you What are you wearing? What's your? It's like a polo. Is it? I'm just wearing a polo shirt. Okay. I didn't know if it was like a, if it, the, okay. the, the smell was locked into that uniform. Mm. Well, in fact, these sleeves are a little short. So I think. Oh, if wow. Anything, if anything was coming out, it's coming out. It's the Denver Gun Show, folks. Schedule your appointment for the Denver Gun Show at oxyfresh.com. Schedule it now while it's still hot. Book your appointment for the Denver Gun Show and Meat Show. Matt, I appreciate you. We'll talk to you later. Fellas, thank you. All right. You know, uh, Thrive Nation, years ago, I had a young lady in my office by the name of Kat. And Kat was a graphic designer. And uh, I was working with a client that was training dogs. So if you could picture this, folks, I'm working with a company that's training dogs. And I have an employee by the name of Kat. And uh, Kat asked me, she said, Clay, with this tip-top canine business that you're helping to grow and franchise, I'm, I'm seeing the growth. Uh, I might be interested in opening a tip-top canine franchise. And that's kind of how that conversation went is how i can remember but i wanted to interview the man married to the cat adam stockdahl welcome on to the thrive time show how are you sir oh doing great like always good to talk to you hey so how did you, can you kind of tell the story of how you first heard about a tip-top canine franchise opportunity uh yeah that was about five six years ago i my wife uh cat talked me into uh getting a cute little puppy and that cute little puppy decided to use me as a chew toy um so at the same time she was working on some marketing materials uh for tip top canine the original location in tulsa and it wasn't too long after that that we hired them to train our own dog and uh, when Ryan was over, I was very impressed with the services, the company in general. And I actually said to him, and he can verify this, at the consultation, I said, you know, I think I'm in the wrong business. Uh, so six, seven months later, when um, I heard through you that they were looking to expand through the franchise model, um, it wasn't too hard of a decision for me to say, sign me up. Now, you own the, the Tip Top Canine franchise. Uh, the, what are the territories that you own at this point, the, the cities or the territories that you guys uh, have rights to? Yeah, so we have four main service areas all within the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, first one that we opened up about five years ago was the South Lake location, South Lake, Texas, uh, just for uh, the out-of-towners. That is between Dallas and Fort Worth. So you got Fort Worth on the west, you got Dallas on the east. So South Lake is to the north, even though it says south, north of Dallas and Fort Worth in the middle. 
And before so, becoming a tip top canine franchise owner, you were in the mortgage business. Is that correct? That is correct. And so uh, my understanding is um, after, you know, you, I know you guys asked me a lot of questions about it. I know your wife asked me a lot of questions about it. You guys met with Ryan and Rachel and you decided to move forward. Um, can you kind of explain what those six weeks of hands-on training was like? Because I, for somebody out there listening right now, that's maybe thinking about buying a tip top canine franchise and they should know, uh, you know, what that experience was like. What was the, what were those first six weeks of hands-on dog training like? Yeah, Clay. So uh, Tip Top Canine has a training service that they call Doggy Boot Camp, uh, where they take your dog and train them intensively for several weeks. Um, and then they come back different and better dog. Um, I'd say it's the exact same way, uh, the same process the franchisees go through. It's definitely a boot camp. Um, it is uh, morning to night. It is uh, six days a week uh, for about six weeks. Um, but by the end of that, you're going to be very comfortable with the training process and you're going to feel like you are well equipped to go out and start training dogs on your own. So you, you did this and Rachel and Ryan, I mean, I, I feel like they do a great job training people on how to train dogs. And they really, Ryan does a really good job teaching the sales uh, aspect of it. And you do a great job because you, you're, you come from a sales background. So you're, you're down there in Texas now. Um, and for somebody out there that's thinking about owning a tip top, once you know how to train a dog and you've, you know, paid all the money up front to auto wrap your car and to go to the six weeks of training. Now you're down in Texas, you're running the business. And I really wanted to identify what you believe to be the, the, maybe the three or four biggest drivers of the growth, because my understanding, I could be wrong, but I think your official title this year is you were the franchise of the year, both this year and last year. Is, is that accurate? Uh, out of the years they've been doing the franchise of the year award, we won half of them. Okay. So, so we, we got this last year, then the year before that. Okay. So you were this year's franchise of the year. What do you believe to be like the four things that you have to do on a weekly basis beyond training dogs that allows your location to, to not only survive, but to thrive? Yeah. So number one, it, it just, the most important underlying theme in all this is going to be consistency. So the, that the thing that I really loved about the tip top canine model is that you do not have to arrange your own calendar. We have a scheduling center that's going to call and book leads for you and set up your schedule every day. Um, and really half the battle, especially when you're starting out is just showing up. Um, the dog training world is not on average, a super sophisticated crowd. So if you just show up to your appointment, you're already in the top 20% of the dog training world. So showing up, being consistent, uh, being on time, being where you, you say you're going to be when you say you're going to be there. Uh, that would be the first thing. Second of all is being able to effectively train people. Um, it's one thing, this is a, it's a very physically challenging business. You're only going to be able to do so much on your own. You're going to have to hire people. And the faster you train those people, the faster you're going to be able to grow. Uh, so one, be consistent, be lead by example, do what you say you're going to, uh, two is train people. Uh, three is assisting the office of lead generation. Uh, there's a lot being taken care of on the back end. Uh, we're doing a lot, Clay's team is doing a lot of search engine optimization. The team is booking incoming calls. Uh, how you're going to help with that is by going around to places that can, can refer you dog training. And just once again, being consistent with those relationships. So that looks like uh, veterinarians, for example. You're going into veterinarians' offices. You're saying hi. You're doing that for a couple weeks in a row. Then you're asking to sit down with the vet, talk to them about the training, and then you're going to start getting referrals. In just the past week in one of our locations, we got four vet referrals, and that's just in one of our four locations. Uh, so that's a big driver of business. And then, you know, just putting in the time. When you're starting out, it is a pretty grueling schedule. It's 7 a.m., to 9 p.m. seven days a week and if you're if you don't have somebody to help you work in those hours then those are the hours you're working um, so it's by no means easy money but if you do it right and you approach it the right mindset it can be very good money now uh what if what would happen if you stopped doing the group interview every week and on t part two of today's show we're going to talk about the group interview process uh what would happen if you stopped doing the weekly group interview 
Yeah. So if we stopped doing the weekly group interview, uh, we would be totally fine for about two months. And uh, then we would start uh, having natural turnover. Maybe somebody was good. Maybe they're not good anymore. And then if you don't have somebody to replace them, then now you are having to do their job. And if you're doing their job, uh, nobody's doing your job, which is training people. So you're going to find yourself trying to do two jobs and then somebody else is going to drop and you're doing three jobs. And you're just not going to be able to find good people to come in if you're not doing the group interview, you're going to hire somebody out of desperation. It's going to be the wrong person, and you're just going to exacerbate that turnover problem. Now, what if you stopped getting Google reviews from your happy customers? I mean, you guys are very consistent at gathering objective reviews from happy customers. What would happen if you stopped getting Google reviews? Yeah, so there's a, uh, a very specific type of person that's going to leave a Google review without uh, asking um, and those typically are not the people you want leaving Google reviews. <laughs> uh, so that is what you're going to get by default. So that is gravity. That is pulling you down. OK, what you need are the rocket boosters of intentionally gathering uh, reviews from your real and happy customers in order to launch you into orbit. Now, the next is video reviews. You know, you guys do a great job gathering video reviews from your happy customers. And what I've heard from uh, many of the franchisees, because I, because I talk to many of you every week, is that buyers, potential buyers, will come to you already convinced that Tip Top Canine is the right choice if they've read enough reviews and watched the video reviews. What impact does uh, video reviews play in the business itself? Yeah, so video reviews just puts a, puts a face to the name. You know, we have hundreds and hundreds. I think between our locations, we have over a thousand five star Google reviews, and I still get people at a consultation be like, "Yeah, but, but do you have any references?" Right? It's one thing to see a name with a review next to it; it's another name to see the face of somebody talking at you. Um, so the video reviews it gives you more of that personal feel as somebody's story. Um, you get to see that they're a real person with a real dog that's really trained. Now, the Dream 100, again, this is where you make a list of your ideal and likely referral sources, um, dog groomers, uh, veterinarians. What would happen if you if you never visited the Dream 100 list by default? What would happen? Yeah, sure. There are uh, there's a lot of people that are going to find you online on Google. If you get all your reviews uh, and you have good search engine optimization, you're going to dominate the search results. There is a significant portion of your market that just isn't relying on Google for this type of thing. Uh, so people really love their dogs. It's uh, it's a very emotional topic. So pe with emotional topics, people are talking to their friends, other people they trust. Veterinarians are a big source of trust. So if you are not getting those veterinarian groomer referrals, you're not aligning yourself with these uh, these authorities in the space, then those people are just never going to hear about you because it doesn't even occur to them to go online and search about this because they're going to ask their vet who to go through. Now, both you and I are, are very efficient individuals. So we typically, um, when our, we hop on a weekly coaching call, I mean, if it needs to be longer, it's longer, but it's usually like a touch point, like a 10 minute, like let's make sure things are not drifting. How important is it to have um, somebody like Andrew who's following up every week just to make sure that, you know, videos get uploaded, that the ads are running? How important is that weekly call to keep things running? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's really no substitute for it. I mean, you... You check you check on things you care about, right? And I care about the business, so that's just our time to really make sure we're we're being accountable for our portion of things. Accountability is a huge part of this, because yeah, it's easy to just get busy and let these things drift over time. Now, um, I have worked in the franchise space quite a bit outside of Tip Top Canine. I've worked with brands like OxyFresh or um, EXP. Uh, Realty. I've worked with UPS franchises. I've worked with just a lot of them. And what I find is a lot of times there are certain um, uh, franchise programs that have like a quarterly coaching call. So like you basically talk to your coach once a quarter or once a month 
Um, wh- why do you believe it's an important thing for the culture to have kind of a weekly touch point as opposed to a quarterly or, or monthly touch point? Yeah, so I I am involved in several businesses and every business I'm involved in, there is a weekly call because I would not be involved in a business that did not have a weekly touch point. Um, especially during the startup phase, it's vital because if you're doing something wrong, you're going to be able to catch it early and correct it. You know, right? it, so make, go ahead. You, know, you seriously, be like, you can, if it's weekly, you can catch it early and, and correct. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. If you're going off course, it's better to go off course a little bit than a lot. Now, the other thing I wanted to bring up is I knew your wife very well because she worked in the office and she knew me because she worked with on my payroll. You know, so we had that uh, a friendship there and also that camaraderie. Um, I, you were kind of the wild card. I didn't quite know about you, uh, but your wife was like, no, he's a great guy. And so, but when you're looking into, you know, when we're, in my case, I'm looking into selling a franchise to you. I don't want to sell a franchise to somebody that won't put in the work. And on your case, as a buyer, you don't want to buy a franchise system that won't work, you know? So what were some of the um, decision points that you went through to decide whether buying a tip-top canine was right for you? Hmm. One thing I, I definitely wanted, uh, the really one of the huge driving factors of decision for me was the scheduling center at tip-top canine. Um, so with me being coming from mortgage industry, I was the front line. Somebody had questions, somebody needed, uh, needed to talk to somebody that was me. They were talking to, uh, and it made it difficult to focus on my work because I was just fielding calls all day, uh, with tip top canine, you do have a scheduling center there for you. They're talking to customers, they're collecting payments. They're doing a lot of the day-to-day administrative stuff that would really just take hours out of your day and bog you down. Uh, so the fact that we had that at our disposal already included in the franchise fee was just absolutely massive. So, and just to kind of recap, and I want to make sure the listeners out there get this, if they're thinking about buying a tip top canine, the key drivers to success is, you know, one, you're saying you wouldn't be involved in an organization if it didn't have a weekly call for accountability. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Second is you, you really, the call center was a big appeal for you. Is that correct? I mean, you knew we wanted to have a call center that handles a lot of that admin. Oh, huge. Yeah. Okay. 100%. Three, you got the group interview. Four, you got the Google reviews. Five, you got the video reviews. Six, you got that Dream 100 uh, marketing. And then seven, uh, our team runs the online ads for you to make sure that they're never off and to make sure the retargeting ads are happening. And we're also writing search engine content for you behind the scenes. Um, how valuable is it to do that as opposed to you having to write search engine content every day? Oh, it, it would be impossible. It wouldn't get done. I, I can just tell you, like, there's no world in which uh, myself or really any other franchisee trying to run this kind of business would be able to do that. Um, and then Andrew is uh, not here, so we can say something nice about him, and we'll see if he watches this show. We'll find out. But um, Andrew has been on my team for years. And I know he loves serving you guys, but how would you describe uh, what it's like to have a person like a point person like Andrew to kind of help you with the account if there's a burning fire? Yeah, so uh, it's really nice to know that you have somebody that's on your team and is knowledgeable enough. He's seen it before, right? So if you come on, you buy a tip top canine franchise, uh, you're not the first one. Uh, the problems, any issues you run into, you're not going to be the first one having these issues. Andrew's seen it before and he's been able to help other locations through it before. Uh, so just having that experience on your side is huge. It just gives you a little bit of peace of mind. Now, we do have a lot of listeners that are in the Texas area. So, again, what are the cities you cover? If anybody out there is listening, has a dog they want to have you guys train? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Pretty much anywhere on the north side of Dallas, Fort Worth. So we've got uh, we've got all of Fort Worth. We've got South Lake, which is kind of between Dallas and Fort Worth. And we got McKinney and Frisco, which are the north side of Dallas. Adam, I really do appreciate you. You've been a great friend, and it's wonderful to see you and your wife thriving. Congratulations again on winning the franchise of the year again, and I appreciate your your diligence. It's fun to work with you, sir. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Clay. Let's see you. Take care. Bye. Wow. <laughs> okay, see? And see the good, and the good folks okay. at Tip Top Canine kind of helped mentor you into your dog training skill set. Am I correct? Uh, Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's right. No, I had all the full training wow. with Rody, and uh, he, he – 
He would have eaten you, Clay. If you were here in person, he would have wow. just ripped an arm off. you got to be careful. Okay, now we're going to move into the heavier stuff here, now that we've covered okay. that. I suppose, but I want to make sure from an animal boy, uh, cruelty perspective, you weren't using a, a part of a dog as a windscreen. One thing, and it's, it's super self-serving because I um, have you know partnered with the brand and have worked with the brand for a long time. Uh, uh, Mike, I just wanted to ask you here, feel free to punt if you want, but uh, the good folks at Tip Top Canine, uh, why I like them is they're providing uh, opportunities for people that don't want to take the jab so they have a if you have a job but you don't want to take the jab i think that's going to be an increasingly difficult thing to find and so if you're looking for a career that doesn't require the taking of the COVID 19 shots the good folks at tip top canine they have a, a six week uh training program where they can six weeks you can learn how to open your own tip top canine franchise uh, there's uh, approaching 20 locations all over the country. Uh, Mike, you've worked with the Tip Top folks. Are, are, has, has your dog eaten you yet? Are you happy with the service? How's it been going so far? Uh, uh, Tip Top Canine is is just amazing. I mean, really interacting with those folks and and getting this dog uh, changed my life. I mean, that's not an exaggeration. And I just want to put this offer out there to anybody listening who wants to consider opening a Tip Top Canine franchise. Uh, once you open a franchise, I will announce it for free. I'll publicize it on my podcast because what I learned from these guys, it, it, it's it's so life-changing. Even I'm training my other dogs, Clay. Now that I learned, let, let, let me back up. So Tip Top Canine people trained me, first of all, on how to train dogs, including this military dog I have here. Wow. And then I took that knowledge and now I'm training my other dogs who I thought were uncontrollable. And now guess what? They come when I call them. They're, they're, it's It's amazing using the training techniques even a guy like me, who's not a professional dog trainer, even I'm competent at training my own dogs now, but this is a great opportunity in any city in America, you know, that's available for the franchises. People want to bring their dogs and, and have them trained because more people are working at home. More lockdowns are probably coming, you know, God forbid, but people need to be able to get along with their pets and uh, tip top canine really is effective at making that happen. That's, I mean, that's just my testimonial right there. Feel free to use it. Mike Adams, thank you so much for carving out time. I really do appreciate you very much. Your studio is looking great there, sir. I know it's been a long time coming. You've been one of the first uh, truth-telling voices in the movement, one of the most heavily censored people uh, in America. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you uh, for, for investing in lighting and sound that makes you look better. Well, see, I'm, we're giving you our wide shot here right now. This is the wide <laughs> shot of the studio. Yeah, just you just, look great. Just to show you it's it's real. It's not a green screen. No, we're no, we actually good. Building, so it looks no, great, it's, Mike. It's coming along. It's coming along. And yours has always looked awesome, but we we finally upgraded to Clay's level of studio. Mike, seriously, and I I say this uh, in any of the events that you've ever want. If we ever do a reawaken America tour, uh, your the door's always open for you. I appreciate all the work you do behind the scenes, um, keeping people focused on exposing the truth. You you really are a leader in the truth movement. I appreciate that, sir. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Well, thank you, Clay. We're working at it. And again, keep me posted. If anybody joins the uh, Tip Top Canine franchise, we want to announce it and help get all these dogs under control all, all across America. So they don't, you know, eat our microphones and things like that. Hey, thank happened. you. I appreciate it. Take all care. Right. Thank you, Clay. Bye. All right, bye. Hey, I'm Ryan Wimpy with Tip Top Canine and I'm the founder. I'm Rachel Wimpy and I am a co-founder. So we've been running Tip Top for about the last 14 years, franchising for the last three, four years. So someone that'd be a good fit for Tip Top, loves dogs, they're high energy, uh, they wanna be able to own their own job, but they don't wanna worry about, you know, that high failure rate. They wanna do that like bowling with bumper lanes. So you give us a call, reach out to us, and we'll call you, um, and then we'll send you an FTD, look over that, read it, fall asleep to it, it's very boring, um, and then we'll book a discovery day, and you come and you can spend a day or two with us, make sure that you actually like it, make sure your training dogs is something that you want to do. So an FTD is a franchise disclosure document. It's a federally regulated document that goes into all the nitty gritty details of what the franchise agreement entails. So who would be a good fit to buy a Tip Top K9 would be somebody who loves dogs, um, who wants to work with dogs all day as their profession. Um, you'll make a lot of money, you'll have a lot of fun, it's very rewarding and who would not be a good fit is a cat person. So the upfront cost for Tip Top is $43,000. Uh, and a lot of people say they're generating doctor money, but on our disclosure, the numbers are anywhere from um, over a million dollars a year in dog training, what our Oklahoma City location did last year, to 25, 35 grand a month. 
um, to train and get uh, trained by us for Tip Top Canine to run your own Tip Top Canine, you would be um, with us for six weeks here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So we've been married for seven years. Eight years. Eight years. So if you're watching this video, you're like, hey, maybe I want to be a dog trainer. Hey, that one sounds super amazing. Go to our website, tiptopcanine.com. Click on the yellow franchising tab. Fill out the form, and Rachel and I will give you a call. Our Oklahoma City location last year, they did over a million dollars. Uh, he's been running that shop for three years. Before, he was a youth pastor with zero sales experience, zero dog training experience before he ever uh, met with us. So just call us. Um, come spend a day with us. Spend a couple days with us. Make sure you like training dogs and um, own your own business. Well, the biggest reason to buy a tip-top canine is so you own your own job and you own your own future and you don't hate your life. You get an enjoyable job that brings a lot of income but is really rewarding. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's, this kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours. On the day-to-day, -day, he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies. He's at the top. He has a team of uh, business coaches, videographers, and graphic designers and web developers, and they run 160 companies every single week. So think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies. So in the weekly, he's running 160 companies. Um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up, and he teaches people a 13-step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building it into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and, and that's what I like him most about him. He's like, he's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down. Um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't... His highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or, uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns, because our clubs were all closed for three months and you have $350,000 of bills you've got to pay and uh, we have no accounts receivable. He helped us navigate that. Um, and of course we were conservative enough that we could afford to, to take that on for a period of time. But it was, uh, anyways, great man. I'm very imp impressed with him. So Clay, thank you for everything you're doing. And um, I encourage you if, you, if you haven't ever worked with Clay, work with Clay, he's gonna help 
magnify you. And there's nobody I have ever met that has the ability to work as hard as he does. He probably sleeps four, maybe six hours a day and literally the rest of the time he's working and he can outwork everybody in the room every single day and, and he loves it. So anyways, um, this is Charles Kola with Kola Fitness. Thank you, Clay. Um, and anybody out there that's wanting to work with Clay, um, it's a great, great uh, opportunity to ever work with him. So you guys have a blessed one. This is Charles Kola. We'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Aaron Antis with Shaw Homes. I first heard about Clay through a mortgage lender here in town who had told me what a great job he had been doing for them. And I actually noticed he was driving a Lamborghini all of a sudden. So I was willing to listen. Uh, in my career, I've sold a little over $800 million in real estate. So honestly, I thought I kind of knew everything about marketing and um, homes. And then I met Clay and my perception of what I knew and what I could do definitely changed. After doing $800 million in sales over a 15-year career, I really thought I knew what I was doing. I've been managing a large team of salespeople for the last 10 years here with Shaw Homes. And I mean, we've been a company that's been in business for 35 years. We've become one of the largest builders in the Tulsa area and uh, that was without Clay. So when I came to know Clay, I really thought, man, there's not much more I need to know, but I'm willing to listen. The interesting thing is our internet leads from our website has actually in a four month period of time has gone from somewhere around 10 to 15 leads in a month to 180 internet leads in a month. Just from the few things that he's shown us how to implement that I honestly probably never would have come up with on my own. So uh, I got a lot of good things to say about the system that Clay put in place with us. And it's just been an incredible experience. I am very glad that we met and had the opportunity to work with Clay. So the interaction with the team and with Clay on a weekly basis is honestly very enlightening. One of the things that I love about Clay's perspective on things is that he doesn't come from my industry. He's not somebody who's in the home building industry. I've listened to all the experts in my field. Our company has paid for me to go to seminars, international builder shows, all kinds of places where I've had the opportunity to learn from the experts in my industry. But the thing that I found working with Clay is that he comes from such a broad spectrum of working with so many different types of businesses that he has a perspective that's difficult for me to gain because I get so entrenched in what I do, I'm not paying attention to what other leading industry experts are doing. And Clay really brings that perspective for me. It is very valuable time every week when I get that hour with him. From my perspective, the reason that any business owner who's thinking about hooking up with Thrive needs to definitely consider it is because the results that we've gotten in a very short period of time are honestly monumental. It has really exceeded my wildest expectation of what he might be able to do. I came in skeptical because I'm very pragmatic and as I've gone through the process over just a few months, I've realized it's probably one of the best moves we've ever made. I think a lot of people probably feel like they don't need a business or marketing consultant because they maybe are a little bit prideful and like to think they know everything. I know that's how I felt coming in. I mean, we're a big company that's definitely one of the largest in town. And so we kind of felt like we knew what we were doing. And I think for a lot of people, they let their ego get in the way of listening to somebody that might have a better or different perspective than theirs. I would just really encourage you if you're thinking about working with Clay. I mean, the thing is, it's month to month. Go give it a try and see what happens. I think in the 35 year history of Shaw Homes, this is probably the best thing that's happened to us. And I know if you give them a shot, I think you'll feel the same way. I know for me, the thing I would have missed out on if I didn't work with Clay is I would have missed out on literally an 1800% increase 
in our internet leads. Going from 10 a month to 180 a month, that would have been a huge financial decision to just decide not to give it a shot. I would absolutely recommend Clay Clark to anybody who's thinking about working with somebody in marketing. I would skip over anybody else you were thinking about and I would go straight to Clay and his team. I guarantee you're not going to regret it because we sure haven't. My name is Danielle Sprick and I am the founder of D. Sprick Realty Group here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. After being a stay-at-home mom for 12 years and my three kids started school and they were in school full-time, I was at a crossroads and trying to decide what what do I want to do? My degree and my background is in education, but after being a mom and staying home and all of that, I just didn't have a passion for it like I once did. My husband suggested real estate. He's a home builder, so real estate and home building go hand in hand, and we just rolled with it. I love people. I love working with people. I love the building relationships. But one thing that was really difficult for me was the business side of things. The processes and the advertising and marketing. I knew that I did not have what I needed to make that what it should be. So I reached out to Clay at that time. And he and his team have been extremely instrumental in helping us build our brand, um, help market our business, our agents. The homes that we represent, everything that we do uh, is a direct line from Clay and his team and all that they've done for us. We launched our brokerage, our real estate brokerage, eight months ago. And in that time, we've gone from myself and one other agent to just this week, we signed on our 16th agent. Um, we have been blessed with the fact that we right now have just over 10 million in pending transactions. Three years ago, I never would have even imagined that I would be in this role that I'm in today, building a business, having 16 agents, but I have to give credit where credit's due, and Clay and his team and the business coaching that they've offered us has been huge. It's been instrumental in what we're doing. Don't ever limit your vision. When you dream big, big things happen. I started a business because I couldn't work for anyone else. I do things my way. Um, I do what I think is in the best interest of the patient. I don't answer to insurance companies. I don't answer to large corporate organizations. I answer to my patient and that's it. My thought when I opened my clinic was I can do this all myself. Uh, I don't need additional outside help in many ways. I, I mean, I, I went to medical school. I can figure this out. But it was a very, very steep learning curve. Within the first six months of opening my clinic, I had a $63,000 embezzlement. Um, I lost multiple employees. Clay helped us weather the storm of some of the things that are just a lot of people experience, especially in the medical world. He was instrumental in helping with the specific written business plan. He's been instrumental in hiring good quality employees, using the processes that he outlines for getting in good talent, which is extremely difficult. He helped me in securing the business loans. He helped me with uh, web development and search engine optimization. We've been able to really keep a steady stream of clients coming in uh, because they found us on the web. With everything that I encountered, everything that I experienced, I, I quickly learned it is worth every penny to have someone in your team that can walk you through and even avoid some of the pitfalls that are almost invariable in starting your own business. I'm Dr. Chad Edwards, and I own Revolution Health and Wellness Clinic. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the highest and most reviewed business workshops on the planet. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. 
you work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying. And I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you.